The movie begins with Dr. Leo Quintum's project team on its first manned exploration mission to the sun. Later, they know that Lex Luthor had sabotaged their mission when one of the members turned into a creature. Quintum thought he genetically engineered him, but Luthor altered his gene mutation to become death itself. The creature starts breaking the controls when Superman arrives and throws the creature at the sun while pulling the pod as it steers too close to the sun. Much to everyone else's shock, Superman extended his own bioelectric field, much like a net, and pulled the pod to safety. It turns out that Luthor was remote controlling the creature back from Earth, much to the shock of the general monitoring him. Luthor was initially released from jail to work for his country and fully utilize his intellect. He does admit that he intended to steer clear from elaborate super death traps, but seeing himself age while Superman remains young has made him return to his old ways. Back at Moonbase, Dr. Quintum ran some tests on Superman and concluded that his body was radically changing after being exposed too close to the sun. He explains that Luther planned to overwhelm Superman's cells with solar radiation more than his body could metabolize. Dr. Quintum feels responsible as he played exactly into Luther's plans. He tries to comfort Superman by saying that they will continue to find a way to save him, but without any treatment, he only has one year left to live. Superman requests to keep it quiet, enough time to buy himself peace from the media. With limited time left, Clark Kent reveals to Lois Lane that he is Superman. He flew Lois to the Fortress of Solitude for her birthday and to spend the remaining time with her. When they enter, it shows that Superman has a hobby of collecting things. In an effort of profound honesty he is going for, he gives Lois a tour of the place. Starting with the armory, where he keeps most of the destructive weapons he has confiscated over the years. He even admits that there are weapons here that could even harm him. Lois urges Superman to be careful as some people will grab the chance to kill him. Superman then shows Lois the time telescope, allowing him to talk with his descendants in the far future. He hopes he can use it one day to stop threats even before they happen. He even showed her the Sun Eater he had kept alive for years. He found it wandering near Jupiter and would have starved to death if not for Superman. While Superman is feeding it, Lois notices a blue room in the corner. When she peeked, she grew paranoid as she saw what looked like a dissecting room. Superman grabs her and tells her it's off limits. Later that night, during dinner, Lois confronts Superman about the many times he and Clark were seen together. Superman explains that it was either Batman standing up for him or a robot. Lois walks out, but not before claiming that Superman has been lying to her for years. Later that night, Lois grows paranoid over the secrets Superman has kept from her all those years. She fears that Superman has brought her to be experimented on, so she grabs the kryptonite laser and arms herself. She then returns to the Blue Room, where she shoots Superman at point-blank range with it. Luckily, Superman has grown immune to kryptonite thanks to his last excursion to the sun. Superman explains that she has inhaled a peculiar chemical he was synthesizing, which causes visual distortion and paranoia. He then shows her what he has been working on, a super serum that gives her his powers that lasts for 24 hours. Superman and Lois fly all over Metropolis when Superman gets a distress signal from Jimmy about a reptile invasion from the Earth's core. Superman and Lois fly towards the battlefield only to find time-traveling heroes Samson and Atlas handling the matter already. With the reptiles taken care of, Atlas suggests they compete for Lois's affection. Samson points out that he has defeated Kroll, the mighty leader of the reptilian horde, while Atlas has single-handedly defeated his army. As they escort the dinosaur people back to the Earth's core, Samson gives her a necklace from the Ultra Sphinx. Superman confronts Samson to return to where they came from, but he admits that he returned in the past after getting news of his untimely death. When Superman urges that they be excused, the necklace shines brightly and the Ultra Sphinx appears before them, demanding they return what was stolen from him. The Ultra Sphinx holds Lois captive in a quantum condition of uncertainty. 
both alive and dead. It asks Superman an unanswerable question, but in a stroke of good luck, he manages to satisfy it with his answer, thereby freeing Lois. Before the day ends, Samson and Atlas challenge him to arm wrestling, to which Superman simultaneously beats both. Before the serum's effects stopped working, Superman used this chance to go to Atlantis, or fly with her to the moon, where they shared a passionate kiss. Her powers slowly fade, and she falls asleep, and Superman flies her back home. The next day, Clark visits Luther in prison for an interview and finds him finishing his work on the Bibliobot, a roving library. He follows Luther doing his daily routine at Stryker's Island. As they walk towards the hallway, they come across a parasite with strong resentment towards Luther. After seeing through Clark's massive life force, it becomes desperate and has grown strong enough to break free from its cell and attack the guards. Clark and Luther run towards the dining hall to find several prisoners enjoying their meal. The parasite breaks through the wall into the dining hall where armed soldiers try to contain it. As the guards fire a smoke bomb at it, Clark uses it as cover to save as many guards as possible and takes them outside Stryker's Island. Luther helps a seemingly weak Clark from the prisoner mob and the parasite. He claims he needs Clark alive to tell his story about how he never bends the knee to alien invaders, specifically Superman. The parasite corners. Luther and Clark, so Clark pretends to fall, uses his legs to break the ground where it fell and gets pinned under the rubble. He admits that he has always liked Clark for being humble, modest, and comically uncoordinated, which makes him very human and quite the opposite of Superman. They later return to his cell, where he reveals he has drilled a hole in the ground to the outside. He admits that when reciting Moby Dick at a frequency so high, it becomes a sonic drill strong enough to break through solid rock. Clark explains that he could have escaped any time, but Luther responds that he never wanted to run and would willingly die on the chair after knowing he had finally fulfilled his dream of killing Superman. He claims he has poisoned Superman with an overdose of the same solar rays that have given him power. He explains that Superman is dying but doesn't want the world to know about it, so he urges Clark to expose him to the world. He is then sent on his way by Luther's niece. At the Fortress of Solitude, Clark has the bottled city of Kandor. Superman claims that Brainiac used his technology to miniaturize the greatest city of Krypton. He has been trying to restore it and its people to regular size but has yet to be successful. With the time he had left, he felt it was his responsibility to find it a new home, a suitable planet for them to colonize, albeit very far. Superman explains the journey will be strenuous and may take out everything he has to complete it. He later finally admits to Lois that he is dying. Lois hopes he will find a way to get better so they can live their entire lives together and have kids. Superman explains that they would not have kids because their biology is different. Clark bids farewell and takes the bottled city of Kandor to deep space. Weeks passed and Superman returned to Earth only to discover that astronaut Kryptonians Bar-El and Lilo had made Earth their new home. He later meets them both and they claim he should have built a new Krypton on Earth. Superman later discovers that Bar-El and Lilo have moved into his Fortress of Solitude and do whatever they want. He originally intended to have them both succeed him as Earth's superhero after he died, but he later realizes that they don't have the best interests of Earth's people at heart. Bar-El took that as a challenge, and they attacked Superman. They even went overboard with their attack, which cracked the moon. Later, Bar-El and Lilo confront Clark at the Daily Planet when Lilo suddenly loses consciousness and Bar-El loses his powers. Superman assumes that when they followed him back to Earth, they crossed a kryptonite debris field which now turns the minerals in their body into kryptonite. Superman explains that he could not neutralize all the kryptonite in their bodies in time. Because they do not have time, Bar-El and Lilo decide to be trapped in the Phantom Zone to buy Superman time to find a cure for them both. Counting the days he has to live, Superman sees Luther one last time before his execution, hoping he will change his mind. 
Superman later visits his adoptive father's grave when Martha, his adoptive mother, bumps into him. She worries that he is sick, but Clark assures her that Superman doesn't get sick. Meanwhile, Luther is chained to the chair minutes before he takes one last sip. Disappointed by Superman's absence, Luther gets electrocuted to death, or so they thought. It turns out that the last drink they gave him was the power serum Superman made for Lois to give her powers. Luther breaks free from Stryker's Island, but not before revealing Solaris, the tyrant's son, to be his ally. Superman gears up for the last time, as this may finally be when he winds up dead, given his condition. Solaris wonders why Superman still has his powers, given that he has already turned the sun red, only to discover that Superman is wearing a special covering that protects him from the red sunlight. Even with the suit, the heat is intense enough that it slowly disintegrates it. Superman pulled out his trump card, the Sun Eater he has been taking care of. As the Sun Eater slowly ate away Solaris, it burst out and blew the Sun Eater away. Furious after losing his pet, Superman kept punching it until he tore it apart. Clark returns to the Daily Planet to show Perry, his boss, his final article about Superman's death when he suddenly loses consciousness. While everyone worries about Clark, Luther arrives and destroys the wall of the Daily Planet. Lois points out that Solaris had double-crossed him and doomed the planet when it poisoned the sun and turned it blue. When Lois almost falls, Clark gets back up and hits Luther with the gravity gun. In his weakened condition, Luther beat Superman and dragged him to the surface where people could see. Luther later realizes that Superman intentionally hit him with the gravity gun as gravity warps time, meaning that Luther's serum has run out. When he thought he still had more of the serum, Superman stole it from him during the fight and destroyed it. With Luthor returning to being human, he is detained by the police while Superman hugs Lois for the last time. He explains that his body is breaking down and becoming pure energy. But before he disappears, he plans on saving the world one last time by fixing the sun. After having said his farewell, Superman flies towards the blue sun and crashes into it, turning it back into the yellow sun. Later, the city holds a memorial service for Superman when Jimmy invites Lois. Lois is confident that Superman is still alive fixing the sun and that when he finally does, he will return to her, and she will be waiting for him then. Meanwhile, at Stryker's Island, Luther meets with Dr. Quintum, who hands him his research into Superman. Luther explains that he recreated Superman's genetic code, which he obtained by reverse engineering the Super Serum. The end. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos, and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.